Good morning, dear friends. Welcome to 21st Century Education. Today, let's solve Winter 2023 Component 2-3. Okay, MCQ paper of uh, 2023 Winter. Okay, let us, let's address the first question. How many of the quantities shown are scalars? So, we have four quantities. First, we have to list out what are the scalar quantities. So, we know that mass is a scalar quantity, density is a scalar quantity, energy is a scalar quantity. So, in total, we have three scalar quantities except momentum. So, C is the right answer. The train is on a straight track. The graph shows how quantity Y varies with time. So, they don't define what is Y quantity. Which statement can be true? Okay, let's explore the options. The train is stationary and Y represents the distance from the last station. That is a possible one. Because if the train is stationary, the distance with its last station is not going to change. So, if Y is the distance, then it is stationary. It can be a straight line. Yes, this is true. Then, the train is moving and Y represents the distance from the last station. So, this is not true statement because if the train is moving, then the graph cannot be a horizontal straight line. It can be vertical up, vertical down or sloping down, sloping up, but it cannot be a horizontal straight line. Okay. So, that is not a true statement. Third, the train is stationary and Y represents the speed of the train. So, we have the word stationary. So, the speed cannot be a constant. If speed is constant means it is constantly moving. Okay. So, this is also not a true, true statement. Fourth, the train is moving and Y represents the speed of the train. Of course, but this is on one condition that the train is not accelerated or decelerated. They didn't mention here. So, the train is moving and Y represents the speed of the train. So, it can be at no acceleration. So, this is a true statement. So, the option is 1 and 4. The diagram shows a speed time graph for a moving object. Which description of the object object's motion is correct okay so let's explore from the last so if it is constant speed it will look like a straight line okay for example like this second constant acceleration so if it is constant acceleration the speed is increasing like this okay so it's not Third, decreasing speed. Decreasing speed will look like this. Okay. Now, decreasing acceleration. So, this is the right answer. Then, then only the graph will look like this. Because the gradient is keep on uh, decreasing. So, if it is increasing acceleration, it will look like this. So, decreasing acceleration is the right answer. The mass of the air hitting blade of a wind turbine each second is 1.5 into 10 per 4 kilogram. The speed of the air is 4 meter per second and the density of the air is 1.2 kilogram per meter cube. What they are asking, which row gives the volume of the air hitting the blade each second and the kinetic energy of the air hitting the blades each second. So, we have to find volume of the air and kinetic energy of the air. We have all the quantities required. So, let us found the volume. We know that density is mass by volume. So, volume is mass by density. So, mass is given as 1.5 into 10 power 4 kilogram divided by what is the density? Density of the air is 1.2 kilogram per meter cube. So, if we do the math, then we will get 1.5 divided by 1.2 then we are getting 1.25 so 1.25 into 10 power 4 meter cube okay so if you round off then we have 13,000 so we have a and b as a viable option then the kinetic energy we know that it is half m v square so again we have all the quantities required so half mass is 1.5 into 10 power 4 Velocity is 4 meter square, 4 meter. So, the velocity square going to be 4 into 4, which is 16, okay. So, I am going to cancel this for 2. Then, uh, 1.5 to 2 is 3, 3, 4 are 12. So, 12 into 10 power 4. So, that is 
120,000. So option B is the right answer here. An object moves in a circle at a constant speed. Which statement about the force needed on the object is correct? Okay. So there is one condition for object in the circular motion that it should have the acceleration and force towards the center. Okay. So no force is needed to keep the moving. So this is not a force towards the center of the circle keeps the object moving in the circle. So this is the right answer. So force in the direction of motion is not a right answer. Force away from the center of the circle keeps the object moving in the center. No, away from. Okay, this is also not. So force towards the center of the circle. That's the right answer. A uniform rod rests on a pivot as its center at its center. Okay. The rod is not attached to the pivot. Forces then apply to the rod in four different wave forms as shown. The weight of the rod can be ignored. Which diagram shows the rod in the equilibrium okay so we what we have to understand so this is the question about moment both right side and left side should be equal and this should be balanced by the pivot okay so since this is not equal because one goes up other goes down it will have a turning effect and this is not equal because the right side it's zero only left side we have 100 so we have b and a right option but b is lifting the rod okay it, it's lifting a both end we have 100 newton to retaliate this pivot will support by 200 newton so a is the right answer a car of mass 1200 kilograms is uh, traveling along a straight horizontal road what impulse need to accelerate car from 5 to 10 meter per second so now we we know the impulse formula that is force into time is change in velocity mass into change in velocity so this is what we have to find so mass is 1200 change in velocity is 10 minus 5 so which is 5 so uh, 1200 into 5 so which will be 6000 newton second so a is the right answer A, a mass bounces up and down on a steel spring. The diagram shows the mass and the spring at different positions during the motion. At which point is the least energy in the gravitational potential store of the mass and at which point is the most energy in the elastic store of the spring. Okay. So we know that the gravitational potential energy is mgh from the ground. So this has to be at its lowest height because this is directly proportional to H. So the least energy in the gravitational potential, potential is should be in lowest point. And then most energy in the elastic store of the spring should be where it has stretched more uh, whether up or down from the equilibrium. So in that case, so this one, so the lowest, that's also lowest point. So D is the right answer. So least energy in gravitational potential store of the mass is also lowest point. Most energy in the elastic store of the spring is also in the lowest point. A boy uses a rope to pull an object of mass m up to a slope, up a slope. The rope is parallel to the slope. The tension of the rope is constant and of value force f. Okay. The object moves a distance d along the slope and rises through height h. How much work done work is done by the boy so there is a slope and there is a mass this boy is trying to pull this mass up with the force yeah okay so we know the work done is up to a distance d so work done is force into distance so a is the right answer so this might seem height like if it is moving vertical no but he is working in the direction parallel to the road so force into distance is the work work done A microwave, microwave oven is rated at uh, 900 watts. Which statement correctly describes the meaning of this value? So, what is unit of power? So, power is energy by time. 900 joules 
transferred every second so this has energy by time 900 amperes this has current by time 900 volts so this has volt by time 900 ohms this is resistance by time so a is the right answer 900 joules are transferred every second an object is immersed in a liquid of density rho the pressure at this depth due to the liquid is p the gravitational field strength is a what is the equation for the depth h of the object beneath the surface so this is very simple the pressure for any body under the surface is density into acceleration due to gravity into h what they are asking is what is the equation for the depth h so we just have to rearrange this equation h is p by rho g so option c is the right answer a sealed bottle of constant volume contains air then the air in the bottle is heated by the sun what is the effect of uh, effect on the average speed of the air particles in the bottle and the average distance between them so it says the constant volume okay so the volume is not increasing or decreasing so all the heat is going to be changed in the pressure and the average speed of the air particle is going to be increased because they are going to have more kinetic energy they are, they are receiving more energy from the sun so average speed of the air particles should increase average distance between the air particle so this would be a constant because the volume is not increasing so stay the same so option d is the right answer In an experiment to investigate the relationship between the volume of a sample of air and its pressure, the volume of the sample is decreased and its pressure is measured continuously. Curve x on the graph. So this shows how a result should be. This is a theoretical result. Curve x on the graph shows the result that would be expected for a fixed mass of air at constant temperature. Curve y shows the result that are obtained in the particular experiment. Which rows, uh, which row shows two possible reasons why curve, curve y is different from curve x. Okay, let's look at the curve x and y. So the pressure is low. The pressure is lower than the theoretical value, meaning either the volume is decreasing or some air particles leak out of the system. Okay. So not leak into the system, leak out of the system, then only you can have the decrease in the pressure. So we have air leaks out of the container as the volume decreased, air leak to the container. So these two options, then the temperature of the air increases as the volume is decreased, one option. The temperature of the air decreases as the volume is increased. So temperature is directly proportional to pressure. If the temperature increase, pressure increase. So in this case, the pressure is decreasing. So the temperature of the air decreases as the volume is decreased. So option D is the right answer. A student splashes water on her face. Here are some three statements about the effect. Which statement are correct? So the water uses energy to evaporate. Yes. The water gains energy from the students. Yes, of course. That's why the student must feel uh, face cool. The, the face of the student cools. So this also right answer. So both P, Q and R are true statements. Four containers each contain water. More water at the same temperature is added to each container. From which container does water now evaporate more slowly than it did before? Okay. So we have to rem uh, remember that the evaporation happen only at the surface so it's directly proportional to surface which of these containers surface area decrease is going to have less evaporation so this has constant surface area so it's not going to change this is going to increase the water evaporation this is also constant only c only in this container the evaporation is going to decrease because the evaporation happens only from the surface A uh, cupboard is placed in front of heater. Air can move through the gap under the cupboard. So like this. 
so which road describe the temperature and the direction of movement of the uh, air in the gap so without looking at the option let's just see what's going on this portion of the air is heated so the heated air has less density so it will move up so this area pressure will decrease to fill that one air from this side has to come through this gap so this is a cold air and what's moving here is a hot air okay so in the gap air temperature will be cooler than before because now cold air moves enter okay so this is cool air direction is towards the heater okay remember the direction of movement air in the gap only in this area so this is what happening so air temperature is cool and towards the heater b is the right answer light diffracts when it's enter the telescope this causes the image to blur slightly the amount of the diffraction depends on the diameter of the hole through which the light enters the telescope and the wavelength of the light which combination for diameter and wavelength will result in a sharpest image least blurring okay so the diameter has to be large so if you widen the gap the diffraction will be less and the wavelength has to be short okay so option b yes okay next question the diagram shows a transverse wave which row identifies the amplitude and the wavelength of the wave we know that the amplitude is maximum displacement from the equilibrium so this height so p is the amplitude and the wavelength is between two successive peaks so either from here to here or from here to here so yes so s is the wavelength so b is the right answer next question the diagram shows the effect of prism on a white light some light is reflected on a strike on striking the prism and some is refracted and dispersed to form a spectrum what happens what happens if monochromatic light is used to instead of uh, instead of white light so there is only one thing going to happen if we use monochromatic light because the dispersion occurs because of difference in wavelength of the light we are sending so if there is monochromatic light there is no dispersion so let's look if there is something in the option yes so there is no dispersion from the emerging light but other things can happen it can reflect the light form a brighter spectrum the light changes color as it pass through the prism these things can happen but dispersion will not occur okay next question the diagram shows a ray of a uh, light incident on a plane mirror the angle between the ray and the mirror is 35 degree the ray is reflected by the mirror what is the angle of reflection so what they are asking is what is the angle of reflection so now it's going to reflect like this what is the angle of reflection so this is angle of reflection some degree so we know that the angle of incident is direct equal to angle of reflection so if you write 35 it's going to be wrong because the angle of incident is actually this which is 90 minus 35 degree 55 degree so angle of reflection also 55 degree so 55 degree is the right answer a thin converging lens in a camera produces a real image on a photosensitive surface as shown at which position is the image of image of the top of the object is formed so let's forget this uh, image part so if there is image like this and there is lens like this we know that the image will form like this okay so it's going to form like this so the top of the image is going to form at c so c is the right answer light is traveling through air it strikes a glass glass block on an uh, at an angle of incidence of 45 degree the glass has refractive index of 1.4 
what is the angle of refraction of the light okay as it enters the glass so incident angle is given refractive index in, uh, index is given what they are asking is what is the refracting angle so we know the formula so n is sin i by sin r we want only r so if i'm rearranging this equation sin r is n by sin i and i just only want the r so r is sin inverse of no this is sin i by n sin i by n so sin i will be sin i is 45 so this will be sin inverse of 0 0.70 divided by 1.4 If I take the sign inverse, then I am getting 3.0, sorry, 330.3, which is approximately 30 degree. So, B is the right answer. Which row gives approximate values for the speed of the sound in copper, water and air? Though we do not remember. Mm, the constant values you can take an educated guess because speed travels faster in copper then it is little less in the water and little, little less in the sound uh, in the air so you are going to see the values decreasing okay so only this is decreasing everything else is increasing or mixed together so a is the right answer uh, but but it is okay to remember these values. It's worth remembering these values, at least for IGCC exam. Which metal can be attacked, attracted by a magnet? We know that only one metal that is attracted by the magnet, which is iron. Okay. The diagram shows an electric circuit in which direction do the free electron flow around the circuit and uh, what quantity does the ammeter measure. We know that the current direction is this. This is called conventional current but the electron actually flow from negative to positive. So in this direction. So electron go anti-clockwise. That's one second. So this is ammeter. This measures current. What is current? Current is amount of charge by time. So charge passing each charge passing each point in the circuit per unit time total charge passing through the ammeter. So this is not total because ammeter will show you what's current passing right now. So charge passing each, uh, each point in the circuit per unit time is the right answer. Yeah. Which substances both contain large concentration of free electron. So we have to choose both good conductor. Aluminium and glass, glass is not a good conductor. Copper and water, water is a conductor but not as good as copper. Copper and nylon, nylon is not a conductor. Silver and gold, yes both are good conductors. So D is the right answer. A resistance of wire length L melt and it has to be replaced with a wire of the same material and uh, the same resistance. The only available wire available has twice the diameter of the broken wire which length of this wire should be used so we what do we know that the resistance is rho l by e okay so it's directly proportional to length and inversely proportional to so since it's work with diameter then we can write by uh, d square by 2 something like that okay now what we have to look for so this wire has been made to bigger wire and this wire has twice the diameter of the broken wire so diameter has been twiced okay now it's in the square so it's going to be four so the new wire has to have four times the length of the old wire then only it can have the same resistance okay 
if the diameter is increased twice the length has to be four times then only it can have the same same resistance because the diameter is in the square form teacher wishes to show the protection of electrostatic charges she holds a rod and it rub, uh, rubs, rubs it down with a cotton cloth a copper rod a glass rod and plastic rod and a steel rod are available which two rods would both be suitable to use so okay so she want to demonstrate electrostatic charges okay so for that we need to polarize charge by rubbing the rod with cloth but if it is a conductor whenever um, electron is transferred or produced it's going to be conducted throughout the metal it's not going to be stay there so we are going to avoid the metal so this has metal this has metal this has metal glass rod and a plastic rod is a good option two resistors with resistance r1 and r2 are used as a potential divider what is the relationship between r1 r2 and potential differences v1 and v2 we know that if there is some voltage so this whole voltage is going to be v1 plus v2 okay and uh, we know that v is i r okay so this v is proportional to r so v1 is proportional to r1 and v2 is proportional to r2 so d is the right answer r1 by r2 is v1 by v2 the diagram shows a light dependent resistor connected to a potential divider circuit the brighter brightness of the light falling on the ldr is increased okay which row shows what happened to the resistance of LDR and what happens to the reading on the voltmeter. So if the light in the resistor uh, LDR increase meaning there are more number of free electrons to conduct the electricity so the resistance will come down the resistance of the LDR decreases. If the resistance decrease reading on the voltmeter will also decrease because V equal to IR. So resistance and uh, voltage is directly proportional to each other. So A is the right answer. A simple AC generator has a coil rotating in a magnetic field. What happens to peak electromotive force and to the frequency of the AC output when the coil rotate faster? So what will happen to the peak EMF and the frequency? obviously the frequency is going to increase because you are rotating more faster okay and peak emf no change or greater peak emf is going to change because if you are rotating faster meaning the same amount of force you had earlier now you are rotating it faster since the rate of change is going to cost you the emf then you are going to have a greater emf so a is the right answer A current passes along a wire placed between the poles of a permanent magnet. The wire experiences a force due to the magnetic field. What will change the direction of this force? So there are different ways you can uh, you can change the direction of the force. Let's explore the options here. Increasing the current is going to change the force only in magnitude, not the, not the direction. Okay reversing current is one option increasing the strength of the magnetic field also going to increase the force but not change the mag magnitude using electromagnet with the same polarity as a permanent magnet still not going to change the direction so b is the right answer reversing the current what is a transform what is a transformer used for so transformer uses to change the alternating current voltage okay changing in direct current into alternating current no changing the magnitude of alternating voltage yes reducing the frequency of no it has nothing to do with the frequency switching of the current in a circuit no it's not it's a switch and it's called fuse
the scattering of alpha particles by a thin gold provides evidence for nuclear model of the atom two alpha particles of same energy are incident uh, on a gold on a nucleus of gold which diagram shows the correct paths followed by alpha particles as they pass close to the nucleus so remember the charge of the nucleus is positive and the charge of the alpha particle is also positive so definitely they are going to reflect they are not going to attract so these two are not two, okay and if you know that the coulomb law the closer to you are the more or less force you will have okay because it's inversely proportional to the distance so the closer to you are will reflect more the farther you are will reflect le less in other words as you get closer and closer um, you will have more reflection or more force you will feel more force due to the other charge so in this case c so this one is going less reflection this one going more reflection it's not so a is the right answer as you get closer for example if you go here you will reflect back straight like this so little more you will reflect you will reflect like this so as you go distance away from it you will have you will have less reflection at one point you will not reflect at all so a is the right answer The half life of carbon 14 is 5700 years. An object containing carbon 14 has count rate of 100 counts per minute when it is first formed. Okay, we are talking about this point here. The graph shows how the, co uh, how the count rate decreases over time. Which point on the graph corresponds to a time of 11,400 years after the formation of the object. Okay. So what we have to find is how many half lives are there in 11,400 years? You know the half life of carbon is 5,700. So we have to divide 11,400 by 5,700. So you can see that this is actually two twice. So the half life two times two half life period so when it is 100 count rate first half life it will come 50 okay then in 50 half second half life it will come 25 so which is equal to this d is the right answer when it is 25 so after two half life the count rate will be 25 counts per minute Why are beta particles deflect more strongly than alpha particles when they enter electric field? Okay. So when a charged particle entering to electric field, they will experience a force um, because Coulomb force. And this, we know that force is mass times acceleration. This, this we know. The more mass you are, then you are going to be more deflected because you are going to experience more force. I mean, either deflected or attracted, depending on your charge. So, beta particle has less mass than alpha particle. That's the right answer. First option is the right option. Beta particles have negatively charged. No. Then it negatively charged means it will just deflect in the opposite direction. Not more. Beta particles have lower velocities without. No. Okay. Beta particles have uh, more ionizing power than. So, this has nothing to do with why more strongly than alpha particles only because they have less mass than alpha particles. Which statement describes how nuclear energy is released by fission in a nuclear power station? Okay, so nuclear fission is nothing but splitting a bigger nuclei into two small, smaller nuclei. That's all. So which option have? Heavy nuclei split into lighter nu nuclei, option B. Okay. Now we have an interesting question here. The diagram shows a star S and the initial arrangement of three planets X and Y, X, Y, Z and Z. Each planet orbit clockwise in a circle about S. So they are going clockwise. The time for the one 
one orbit of y is three times the time taken one or for the one orbit of x the time for one orbit z is twice the time taken for one orbit y so starting from the initial arrangement which diagram shows the position of the planet after x has made one complete orbit so it's from astronomy but it's actually a checkpoint math question you have to find ratios that's all so let's take x and y and z for one revolution y need three times so it will be there in one by three okay one revolution of y z will be taking two times of this so this will be 1 by 2 into 1 revolution time of y so 1 by 3 so which is 1 1 by 3 1 by 6 so i don't want this i don't want to work with the denominator so i'm going to multiply multiply everything by 6 the largest term okay so 6 uh, this is 6 by 3 is 2 1 by 6 is 1 so when you can find the option from both when x complete sixth round then only the y will complete two round the z will be completing one round so when x complete one round y will be completing one third of the circle z will be completing one sixth of the circle so how to find one third or one sixth so it is easy so if there is a circle this is four So this is six you have six part uh, maybe yeah you have six part one two three four five six so when x complete one revolution so y will be completing one by three so one two three why will be here no 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 it will be not here yeah so when x comes one round y will have one third of the circle one one third of the circle so so this is one third of the circle so y will be here and z will be one sixth of the circle so as we explained earlier so this is one sixth of the circle so z will be here so let's explore the options yes b is the right answer because when x is one round y is one third and z is one sixth so b is the right answer The nearest star to the sun is about four light years away from the earth. A student makes three statements about the star. Light from the star takes about four years to reach the earth. Light from the sun takes about four years to travel to the star and back to the earth. The star is outside our galaxy. Which statements are correct? The star is outside our galaxy is irrelevant because we have to know the size of our galaxy. Light from the sun takes about four years to travel to the star and back to the earth. No, it's not because they said sun is about four light years away from earth that's all four light years away from so we don't care where the sun is so this is light from another star the light from the star takes about four years to reach the earth because that's a definition of light year what is the definition of light year the distance light travels in one year okay which statements are correct one only A planet orbits the sun with orbital period p uh, t the average radius of the orbit is r what is the average orbital speed of the planet okay we know that speed is distance by time so if it is in circular okay so distance is circumference of the circle which is 2 pi r so distance is going to be 2 pi r by time is going to be t. So b is the right answer. Thank you for being here. See you in the next, next video.